In its nearly 20 year history, the Halo franchise has solidified itself as one of gaming's most iconic and transformative series. But behind the commercial success of Xbox's most recognizable IP is the Halo community, a lively collection of players, fans, creators, and critics who for the past two decades have not only shaped the fan experience of the Halo series, but who have also helped cultivate and change the scene of the games as well. And now, for the first time ever, we're turning our gaze away from the games and focusing it on something else. The people who play the games. That's just about how long the Halo franchise has stood in the gaming industry, and while there's much critical acclaim for the franchise, over the past decade, the series has seen its fair share of critique and complaint. And a lot of that is born internally, from Halo fans themselves. Why is it the Halo franchise sees so much backlash from people who identify as Halo fans? Have you ever taken a college psych class? Well, in case you haven't, in today's video, I'm going to teach you about the only topic from a college psych class that's worth paying attention to. That is frame of reference. Frame of reference refers to the logical window people observe the world through, and subsequently, the same window they judge the world through. The window is shaped by our life experiences and tinted by our personal perception of those experiences. Every person has their own frame of reference, and each individual can produce different interpretations of the same event based on their frame of reference. Some easy examples of how frame of reference influence us can be seen in some pretty simple places. Women have a different perception of childbirth than men. A person living in a city probably has a different view of public transportation than someone living on a farm. And a person with two legs probably has a different perception of walking than someone with no legs. And by now, I'm sure most of you are just waiting for me to explain how Psych 101 relates to Halo. Well, if we want to understand why Halo fans are so apt to critique and attack the franchise, we need to understand the perception they have of the franchise. Halo fans have an extremely consistent tendency to intercompare the games. By this, I mean seldom are we worried about Halo in comparison to other titles. We like to focus on how one Halo game compares to another. I wanted to find out if people's tendency of comparing Halo games to each other was derivative of the frame of reference concept. In order to do that, I had to probe the community with a series of obvious questions where their Halo frame of reference rested, and in between the intentional probing, I injected questions meant to indicate to me how the frame was influencing responses. Let's talk results. In the state of Halo studies, respondents were asked in multiple instances to indicate which Halo game was their entry to the series. Entry is an important word. I specified that entry meant not the game they first played by chance, it was the game they first became invested in. This game would assuredly be key in how this person's frame of reference for Halo developed. My studies indicated a near perfect three-way deadlock with Halo CE, Halo 3, and Halo Reach being the predominant titles in which players first fully engaged with the franchise. This means that the Halo community is home to what I call three houses. Three very distinct fan generations that with them carry differing perceptions of Halo as a series. And these three houses are at constant odds to control and critique the future of Halo based on their own ideas. These ideas are far from aligned, however. I mean, really think about it. These three games are very different from each other. They don't provide exactly identical experiences. 
and to explain why they are so different would pretty much require its own video. So I'm asking you as the viewer to bear with me and just operate under the assumption at the least that these three games are not mirror images of each other. The next key step was to identify how the three houses responded to an array of Halo questions. For example, I asked each respondent to rate their opinion of each Halo multiplayer experience, then I analyzed how the three houses viewed each other. The Halo 3 group ranked their game the highest, with a 92% positive rating on Halo 3, the highest for any title. The Halo CE crowd was uh, the least enthused about their game, providing only a 60% positive rating for the title. In the general sense, the members of the houses have much more positive views of their own games as compared to others. At any rate, this does indicate that at the least, people have more positive views of their games that they entered the franchise with, and they carry those forward. And something I find interesting is that regardless of a house that you rest in, a greater than 50% majority of respondents had positive views of all the games outside their favorite. This highlights that in reality, even though people may like one Halo game more than another, there is never a majority dislike of any title. This is a great counter for when people claim everyone hated Game X. Even in the most extreme scenario, the majority of players preferred a positive view on the Halo multiplayer experience. For example, many people like to say Halo 5's multiplayer was the worst in the franchise, quote unquote. This is contrasted to the respondents, who indicated a more strongly positive reception of Halo 5's multiplayer than Halo 4, Halo 2, and Halo CE. In fact, Halo 5 had one of the lowest, plainly negative receptions. Despite being not disliked casually, it has the largest, strong negative reception. It's this chunk here that is most likely the root for discourse, as people here are highly inclined to publicly attack the game. Members of the Halo CE house made up the largest portion of strong dislike for Halo 5 at nearly 40% of the contribution, but the three houses have more unique response patterns to break down. Like I said, I want to see if entry title correlates to your perception of Halo, and so far all we've done is prove that people are more apt to favor their entry title. I also asked respondents, in regards to your favorite Halo multiplayer experience, how off-put are you when other titles deviate from that experience? In regards to that, the Halo 3 house had the highest dislike for outside changes, with about 56% distaste. The Halo Reach house was more accepting, at only 47% dislike for change showing a majority neutrality towards any change. To press further, the Halo 3 house had the most people strongly opposed to change, rather than just slightly opposed. This may be indicative of the trend that Halo 3 fans are much more forward in their dislike for different Halo titles. They're not casual in their feelings for change, they're very charged. A follow-up question asked if the opinions of veteran Halo players should be considered more valuable than the opinions of newer fans in which again, the Halo 3 house takes dominance, with the highest agreement that veteran opinions are more valuable. And all this is further indicative of the radicalism of Halo 3 fans. Remember that they produce the highest positive rating of any title, their own of course. Now I don't get carried away when I say radicalism, I don't mean anything crazy. What I mean is that members of the Halo 3 house openly tend to be more extreme in their response pools, especially compared to their peer houses. So if we're operating under the assumption that these entry titles form the average player's frame of reference for Halo, it's pretty easy to see how much bias can be resting in that frame. In fact, in a different survey, on average about 20-30% to 30 of newer fans felt attacked or unwelcomed by veteran Halo players on different topics related to Halo. When players are focused on comparing Halo games to each other, there's a strong chance that the base comparison is to their entry title game, even if it involves two other games in general. 
which as we've seen is usually the game the player likes the most anyways. In discussion, players are constantly trying to argue that the frame of reference they've placed on Halo is the one true proper frame for the franchise. But does any player have the right to do that? Just think about how quickly this gets complex. A member of the Halo Reach house has a different reference for Sprint than people of Halo CE or Halo 3. Someone from HCE has a different view on the Magnum than the other two. Someone from Halo 3 has their own perception of dual wielding. All three houses see customization differently. All three have different ideas on Forge. And all three have very different weapon metas that define the gameplay experience. The list goes on and on. And those factors are constantly acting as the basis by which people have formed their opinions. If you're here at the end of this video seeking a singular solution to this issue, I don't think you'll find it. I don't have one for you. To do so would require the invalidation of someone else's frame of reference. And frankly, who are you to do that? Who is anyone to decide their perception of Halo is more valuable than another person's? But I think this information can serve one very key function. It can be a wake-up call for people to stop asserting their house is the sole majority and owner of the Halo franchise. This video should teach at least everyone one very key thing. There is no majority in control of this franchise. There is only a collection of houses acting on their own ideals and in nearly each way, a house thinks its own majority is the true one against its peers. That's just not the case. Thank you for watching. Leave your thoughts and comments below. Let me know what house you fall in and how you think it's affected your perception of the Halo franchise. I'm Ascend Hyperion, and this has been the State of Halo.